So guys, welcome to Carol Programming. I was trying another two videos, but those got ruined because no privacy. But anyways, uh, Carol is a very simple programming language that was invented in the 90s-ish back in the day for people that wanted to start coding. But you know, seeing something like this might seem a bit overwhelming <laughs> so what the inventor of carol did is that he created this little robot and it would follow four basic commands and why not and cody chess did something similar they just adapted it to a dog <laughs> pretty neat so as i said carol is a really simple programming language don't expect to do like triple a games with this but it's more like to start making your mind shift its gears towards logic that goes into writing down programs. You know, it's it's very simple, but it will start making your mind think a bit more like a programmer. So let's go ahead and start with the first assignment, which it asks for Carol, as you can see in the result world image. It asks for Carol to move four steps ahead and then collect the ball that is here. So, as I said, we only have four basic commands that Carol knows. These are the only four things that Carol knows how to do. So, this is not included here for the sake of simplicity, but I'm going to add it here. Every single time you code in Carol, since it's kind of inspired in JavaScript, uh, you're going to be under this thing called function start. Let's give me that, two curly brackets. Function start is basically everything that is going to happen once I click this run button which right now it's nothing because there's nothing inside of function start but once there's code inside of there once there's code instead of inside of function start everything will start running from top to bottom the moment that I press run so as I said previously Carol needs to move four times up ahead so she can pick up the ball so we're just gonna write the move command four times in a row right Move, 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 and move. So once we have that and we press the run command, it's going to start running from top to bottom, and Carol is going to move four times in a row. Now what's the problem here? Carol is not picking up the ball. Well, lucky us, that's another thing that Carol can do. Carol can pick up a ball with the command take ball. So once I do that, and I reset the command, uh, I mean I reset the program, sorry, and then I run the commands, it's going to go move, 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 take ball, and that is it. Now, don't bother trying to jot down this in your notes if you're taking notes. I mean, you can try to keep up, but it's not, necessarily, uh, not necessary at all, unless you want some extra inf information. Uh... You can write other functions. Just like function start, you can write other functions. You know, for example, if I wanted to avoid writing move four times, you can write a function that will repeat the move four times. Uh, you can do this inside of function start, but I'm just gonna I usually do it in other functions to keep the code a, to keep the code a bit cleaner. So I'm gonna write function movement or an abbreviation of movement and the curly brackets and then I can write move, move, oops, I did not mean to do that, move, and move. So once I do that and I press run, Carol moves the four times, but why didn't she move the extra four times? I mean, yeah, she would crash against the wall, but why didn't she move beyond that? That is because we're not calling the function. Any other function that is not this one, any other function that is not function start, needs to be called just like any other command. Because what a function does is that it basically teaches Carol new stuff. So after writing down function movement, I can delete these four, I can indent it, and then I'm just going to call movement. Because we already defined the function up here, Carol knows that if we say movement, she's going to move ahead four times. So I can just minimize that, 
and I press run again and Carol will move the four times because that's what the movement command tells her to do now if you want to be even more up ahead of the game you can go for loops for a certain amount wait sorry for variable a we're just gonna have a random variable called a we're gonna make it oh, sorry variable a equals to zero we're gonna make it that as long as a is less than three it's gonna be adding once every time we run this command like I said don't keep up with this I'm not gonna even try to explain it right now because you pretty much don't need to know it right now so we're gonna write the variable the command movement no sorry not movement move and then we're gonna close it with the thing and then we're gonna close this and if I reset the code and run it it is still going to run the same I only wrote a move once but it is looping with this and oof I actually I forgot it had, she has to move it four times sorry so reset run the loop is going to repeat this command up here four times and then Carol will get to the ball and Carol will take the ball so as I said don't try to remember this you can pretty much stick with repeating move four times there's nothing to be lost you know you're you if you're watching this you're probably just starting like at all move 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 oops move and it works now I'm just gonna press them and continue even though it doesn't really matter but we're gonna jump into the next assignment I don't know how long this video is but sure uh, short stack so what Carol has to do here is that she's gonna start in a world where there's nothing basically she's gonna move once then she's gonna place two balls and then she's gonna move ahead, move ahead once so let's write our function start here again that's really important so you don't get kind of surprised later on and then inside of function start we can start writing our code so Carol needs to move ahead once so we're gonna write move and then Carol needs to put down two balls here so I'm gonna write put ball and then write down again put ball now after that Carol's gonna move once put two balls and then it asks for Carol to be ahead of the balls that she just placed so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a last move command oops and once we do that the program should run fairly smooth now the last thing that we're gonna do today that is not really necessary as I previously said uh, is debugging debugging is very important since most of the time when you're programming something debugging is gonna take a good chunk of your time a good 60 70 percent of your time it's gonna be debugging so you need to have some practice with that okay I recommend going into code HS or somewhere else where you can find Carol and try starting out there okay I made a teacher account uh, I don't know if that could get me in trouble but I made a teacher account to be able to log in from my home computer uh, and as you can see debugging is in the first unit of Carol programming in 1.1 so let's try to start looking here okay if we try to run the command as we can see we can we're Carol is supposed to be like three steps ahead and we try to run the command Carol doesn't do anything why because there's an error in line five it says it said you should indent this line forward twice but if we do that and we run it again nothing pretty much changes why is why is this? So, if you were a bit ahead of the game, you would have noticed, number one, this left, uh, this turn left command doesn't have the second parentheses. And then both this and the first turn left command are missing the semicolon. So we're going to snap in both semicolons, and then if we press run, Carol only turns around. But she's not on Avenue 3, so basically X3. Sorry. Uh, yeah, she's still on Avenue 1. 
So what else is wrong with this code? If you could also see it a bit from the beginning, the move commands don't have the parentheses at all. So once we snap in both of those parentheses and we press run, Carol does her entire jam. And that's pretty much it for today. Uh, oh, I wanted to say, uh, you know, remember, this is very important so you don't get surprised later on. Uh, later on. Do that. And then cut that. You can put it all into your function start. And if you feel like turning left, she's basically swir she's basically doing like a backflip when you turn left. So you can do a function backflip, parenthesis, squirrely brackets, and then you're just going to put for, let's say var i, sorry, var i equals zero, i less than how many times? She has to turn around four times, uh, i plus plus. And then you put the curly brackets, and then you're going to just right turn left once. Oops, not yearn. <laughs> you're going to turn left once. And then I'm going to replace these by function b flip parenthesis semicolon, and we can run it. And same thing happens. <laughs> so that was all for today. I hope you liked the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you to begin a bit with Carol. Next time we're gonna go through uh, making a tower, uh, pyramid of Carol, and go through the door. I might also check tennis ball square, but I don't know about that yet. So yeah, just be sure to hop in tomorrow or when the next video releases. Subscribe and hit the like button. See you later.